Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for another exciting CLIA Global Cruise Line webinar for an immersive update on all things Explorer Journeys. My name is Johanna de Guzman. I am the Manager of Industry Relations for North American Travel Trade Membership here at CLIA, and I'm going to quickly go through some housekeeping before introducing our presenter. The webinar will run for about 45 to 50 minutes with time for questions at the end. Please feel free to type your questions into the questions module of the webinar, and we will get to them at the conclusion of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on CLIA's YouTube channel, CLIA Global. It is my pleasure to introduce our presenter, Amy Price. Amy is the head of sales for North America for Explorer Journeys, the newest European luxury lifestyle ocean experience. Amy works alongside the North American president to lead a sales organization focused on a robust trade engagement strategy geared toward interacting or excuse me attracting our mutual luxury clients of the future a cruise industry veteran of more than 30 years previously holding key sales roles at royal caribbean and seaborne cruise lines amy is completely committed to supporting the travel advisor community and with that take it away amy thanks johanna uh, thank you all for joining us today everyone out in the CLIA nation. Gosh, when Johanna read 30 years, I was like, oh, has it really been that long? But time flies when you're having fun. And it certainly has been fun being part of this brand new brand. So I'm gonna go off camera and I want you to focus on the slides. We're gonna go through an update with regard to everything that's happening at Explorer Journeys. We've now been in operation for just over a year and we have a lot to share. So let me go ahead and get started. One of the best things about being part of this new brand it, is it does give you an opportunity to share something unique with your clients, something new and something that has been very thoughtfully created through the lens of consumers as well as travel advisors. And we like to call that sale unique and giving your guests the opportunity to discover their ocean state of mind. Now, when we say that we've been created through the lens of a luxury guest as well as travel advisors, we truly have at the heart of everything that we have done, focus on what has been important to luxury travelers. And it started way back, even before ships were in the water. We worked with McKinsey Group and surveyed over 20,000 luxury travelers. And we asked them what was important to them when it came to a luxury vacation and choosing their luxury, luxury vacation experience. In addition to that, we also spoke to over 250 travel advisors. Some of you may be on the line today that we spoke with several years ago, but we have what we call the art of listening. And we continue to listen and we continue to brand build, even though we do now have a ship in the water, we have a lot more brand building to do. And we're gonna still need your comments, your feedback, as well as your guests. And we continue to land, lean into those. And I'm gonna share a little bit more about what guests have been saying and travel advisors about our brand since we've been operational now for just over a year. But in those conversations, as we were leading up to building the brand, there were a few pillars that really came to light and rose to the top and became very important as we were building not only the physical attributes of the ship, but our commercial terms and how we work with clients. One being space. Luxury guests told us that space was really important. So you'll see that in the physical attributes of the ship. You'll see the largest guest to space ratio in the industry. You'll see the suites with the largest lead in suite square footage. You'll see that with all of that space, we're also able to accomplish something that's very important to luxury guests, and that is giving them choice. So if you think about it, you can't have choice without space. So with all that space, we're able to provide multiple culinary choices, multiple lounging options, multiple outdoor areas, which we'll feature today as well. And then those luxury guests also told us that it was really important to focus on design, that they didn't want something stuffy, they didn't want something um, outdated. They wanted something contemporary, but they also wanted something comfortable. And comfortable is a word that comes to light quite often when you speak to guests who have sailed with us already, travel advisors or guests. We continually hear how comfortable our ships feel. 
at how elegant the design is and how there's been lots of thought and attention to detail. And I'll point that out as we go along today as well. And then last but not least, another pillar that came to top is that they wanted us to provide them with immersive journeys. So many times clients and guests think that if you're going to be on a ship, you're not gonna really be able to experience the destination, to understand the culture, to be more immersive in the, the location that you're at. So what we've done is we've created itineraries that are accessible easily by way of Embark and Debark port, but then also visit unique off the beaten path places along the way where we spend longer amounts of time whether it be late evenings or even sometimes overnights to provide more of that destination. And we'll get into destinations a bit more as well in this presentation too. But I think one thing that you're going to want to understand is who is the right client for Explorer Journeys? I would say to you that the right client is that discerning client, that discerning affluent working wealthy guest who's really looking for a new way of travel on the ocean. And what we have done is we have redefined that classic luxury cruise experience, and we like to call it journeys. We don't like to necessarily use the word cruise a lot in our lexicon, and that's intentional because we were designed to help you bring new cruisers to the industry. It doesn't do any of us any good on the line to continue to just shift share of guests from one line to another line. Instead, we wanted to help you tap in to the astronomical percentage of guests out there who've never even been on a ship or thought of an ocean journey as being a vacation option for them. So a lot of times what you will find is guests, again, coming off our ship or coming on our ship and saying, wow, this is just like a boutique hotel, but it's at sea and the ocean is its address. And there's lots of attributes to the ship that can help you sell this as a boutique hotel at sea and help overcome some of those aversions that some of those luxury land lovers have come to lean into when you suggest an ocean voyage. When they come on board with us, we also of course want to help them discover that ocean state of mind. Everything that we do is driven by the ocean and we feature the ocean in many ways on board our ship. Almost every space that you go into on board has floor to ceiling windows so that you have access to the ocean, even in the casino. If you think about it, most ships, their casinos are tucked away in the middle of the ship. We have windows out to the ocean in the casino, in the shops, all over the ship. I think there's only one lounge that I can think of where there isn't access to the ocean and that is our, our show lounge area, which I'll touch on in a minute. So we want those guests to find their ocean state of mind and really connect with the ocean and leave our ship feeling rejuvenated and relaxed, not exhausted and tired. So everyone's ocean state of mind is gonna be something different and they can certainly find that on board with us when they sail unique. Now what's included in an Explorer Journeys vacation? I wanna start with this up front so that as we're going along this presentation, you can think, oh yeah, that's included. Oh yeah, they don't have to pay extra for that. Oh yeah, there's no upcharge. So what is included in our journey fair? We have a sophisticated variety of culinary experiences which we're gonna to touch on today, unlimited beverages, fine wines, and premium spirits, they do get an in-suite bottle of welcome champagne from the house of LVMH, and the champagne changes based on the suite category that they are staying in. Authentic, cultured, and intuitive service. I'm gonna to touch on that on the next slide. Access to the spa thermal area, which on most lines, if you're going into the spa and you wanna use the thermal area, that's gonna be an upcharge. We include that in the journey fair. All of our well-being and fitness programs, 30-minute classes such as boot camps, floor Pilates, stretching, yoga, all of those are included. Complimentary high-speed Wi-Fi throughout the ship. And I'm gonna stop here for just a second. When we say high-speed Wi-Fi, we mean high-speed Wi-Fi. The reason for that is, A, we use two providers. We use SAS and we use Starlink. Additionally, every single suite have a router in the suite, which is not the industry norm. The other thing to note is that every guest who sails with us 
can connect up to three devices. So you don't have to worry about that inconvenience of being connected to your laptop, but wanting to connect on your phone and having to log off your laptop and log on your phone. And then, oh, by the way, maybe you wanna use your iPad and you have to log off your phone now to use your iPad. You don't have to do that. You can connect to three devices at all times. And I can say with the utmost confidence that our Wi-Fi is extremely reliable, extremely high speed. I've done multiple webinars, Facebook Lives, FaceTimes, tours of the ship, live from the ship. In fact, it's kind of funny, when we first started operating, I had a travel advisor that was sailing with us and had a group. And she said, now, Amy, tell me, really, is the Wi-Fi as strong as you say? And I said, indeed it is. You'll be able to stay connected the entire time. In fact, I do lots of meetings over Teams while I'm on board. And she responded to me saying, damn, I thought I was going to be able to get a break. Sorry, no breaks on Explore Journeys. But the one thing to note is for those affluent, working, wealthy clients, if they are ever hesitant about taking a cruise because of the Wi-Fi, that can be dismissed because they can stay connected, they can work if they need to. We have redefined the term pleasure, which is doing a little bit of business with your leisure on board. They can certainly do that. If they need to stay connected from a social standpoint, they can certainly do that as well. So Wi-Fi is definitely a key attribute of our brand. All onboard gratuities, of course, are included. And then in destinations where guests can't easily access the city center, we do have shuttle services to and from the city center. So if they wanna go off and explore on their own, we can get them to that city center to do so. And then of course, as you are staying with us in different suite categories, such as our penthouses and residences, which we'll cover, they do include additional services and inclusions as part of that suite amenity. Now let's talk about service really quick. We do have a guest to host ratio of nearly one to one. It's 1 1.25 to one. And one thing I will say is that we are getting extremely high, high praise for our onboard team. The attention to detail, the interaction with the guests on board. And I'm gonna attribute that to the way that we have done our hiring. And I know for a fact, because I used to work on another brand in Shipboard HR, and they often, most of the times, would go to a hiring partner and, and ask for five bartenders from Jamaica, six waiters from Croatia, five housekeepers from South America. And all of a sudden these guests would, or these crew would show up to the ship, not really knowing the brand, never having met their manager, and be thrown into a job within 24 hours. That's not how we've done our hiring. We did use hiring partners to bring potential candidates to our hiring tour, where we interviewed these potential hosts face to face. We were looking for engagement. Do they look you in the eye? Do they engage in conversation? Do they have a history of working in five-star hotels or other like-minded cruise experiences? What is their demeanor? What is their character? We hired for personality, and it really does show in our hosts on board. And we don't call them crew, we call them hosts. Again, a different type of lexicon. Hosts because we are welcoming you, you and your guests into our ship, and we are hosting you in your home at sea. So let's talk a little bit about those unique spaces and what the sail unique elegant spaces mean. And I just mentioned that we're welcoming you and your guests into your home at sea. We really have tried to take that design element and create, again, that comfortable space on board. And with that, we have come up with 461 all oceanfront, all terraced suites. There's a couple of words in there that I want you to make sure that you use when you're talking about us. And this is again, because we're trying to attract those land lovers and those luxury hotel guests. When you say all ocean front suite to a hotel guest, they say, oh, that means I'm gonna see the ocean the entire time. It's not ocean view, which is very different in a hotel because at a hotel, if you say ocean view, you might see the ocean from time to time, but there also might be a big palm tree in the way. But when you say ocean front, you know that the ocean is gonna be accessible at all times. And that is definitely the case with our 461 suites. They also all have terraces, not balconies, not verandas. These are terraces because they are quite large and generous. 
And we start our entry level suites, start with what we call our ocean terrace suites. Now we have 361 ocean terrace suites. They are 377 square feet in totality. They have 75 square feet on the terrace, which is large enough to have a beautiful Italian chaise lounge, a table and two chairs that you can kind of see here in this picture, very large balcony space, and then 302 square feet of interior space. These suites are extremely comfortable. Every single one of them has a king bed. Some of them do have the ability to split into twin beds if you need that configuration and those are denoted on our deck plans. They all have, for example, Italian coffee makers. They have separate tea kettles in them. They have a full pantry set up. You have a stocked mini bar with your spirit of choice, that complimentary bottle of LVMH champagne when you get on board. There are Dyson hair dryers in every suite, lady, so you don't need to worry about bringing a hair dryer. Heated marble floors in the bathrooms very generous European walk-in showers. We are getting compliments all the time about the size of the showers. There are so many more amenities and little touches that when you come on board, again, it just makes you feel really comfortable so you can relax and rejuvenate in your home at sea with us. Now, one thing I wanna point out about these Ocean Terrace suites is that 80 of them are connecting suites. So you will have the opportunity, if you have a family of four, you would need a connecting suite situation or you would need to be in one of our grand penthouses or residences. Speaking of families, we are owned by a family and we do accommodate families. I wouldn't say that we necessarily promote to families and that you won't see a bunch of brochures with kids and, and families in them, but we accommodate families by way of the connecting suites. We also have a full children's programming on board year round and space built out on board for children ages six to 17 to enjoy our Nautilus program and our Nautilus experience managers. We have been getting a lot of rave reviews on the way that we handle families and children. And I think you can easily sell us to your luxury clients who are looking for a multi-gen vacation opportunity and everyone will be comfortable and accommodated. And even those who don't wanna see the kids, I think it's a great prospect for them because we do have a space built out on board and they are pretty well contained with our experienced managers. So those are our Ocean Terrace Suites. Then from the Ocean Terrace Suites, the next category up is what we call our Ocean Penthouses. Now we do have four different categories of Ocean Penthouses and in total we have 67 Ocean Penthouses. These range in square footage from just over 460 square feet to just over 732 square feet. The four different categories include the PH, which is the penthouse. Then we have our deluxe penthouses. We have our premier penthouses, and then we have our grand penthouses. So the size, of course, goes up based on the category of penthouse that you're choosing. These are definitely generous. In some cases, they do have separate bedrooms from the living area. And in most cases, they will separate off at least with a half wall or a partial wall, the living area from the bedroom area. So those are ocean penthouses. We have 67 of them. And then our top, top suites are what we call our ocean residences. And we call them residences because again, we want them to feel like homes at sea. It's not that you can buy them like a condo and live in them like a residence, although you could sail with us back to back to back to back for as long as you would like, and it could become your very own residence but we only have 22 ocean residences, and these range from just over 750 square feet up to 14, or sorry, up to 1600 square feet. Again, four different categories of residences. We have our cove residence, we have our retreat residence, we have our serenity residence, and we have our cocoon residence. Now, these are all gonna come with their own private suite host, who will tend to their absolute every need on board. They also come with their own private jacuzzi hot tub on their terrace. And as you can see by the schematic here, you're looking at what I believe is one of our Serenity residences. And the terrace is quite substantial here with lots of room to spread out and enjoy a little bit of outdoor living while you're on board. And then our top, top, top residence is what we call our owner's residence. And we do only have one owner's residence on Explorer 1 and Explorer 2. And I'm gonna talk about the fact that we are gonna grow pretty quickly with six ships. The subsequent ships, three, four, five, and six, 
will have two owner's residences. And that again came out of the art of listening from our travel advisors. They do have guests who like to sail in the exact same type of category. And for those who are choosing the owner's residence, there was a little bit of rock, papers, and scissors going on because we only have one of them. The owner's residence really is the piece de resistance on board. It's 3,014 square feet. It does span the entire aft of deck eight. So you do see you get quite a bit of substantial terrace space here. Again, your own private dip pool here, which is an infinity pool looking off the aft of deck eight. Plenty of entertainment space here. So if you do have a multi-gen family and the patriarch or matriarch of the family wants to be in the owner's residence, there would be lots of space for them to entertain with a full-on dining area, huge entertainment area, large bedroom, massive bathroom, as well as that massive terrace that we showed. So that's an overview of our 461 suites. You can see how comfortable they're designed, very sleek and contemporary, but also very, very useful and very, very spacious. With that space again, we are all also offer, able to offer your clients the ability to sail unique when it comes to culinary experiences. And I do like to point out and attribute the success that we have been seeing in our culinary to the gentleman on the right here. His name is Franck Gallanger. He came to us from Oceana, and with him, he brought a team of four chefs from Oceana, and they were given a blank slate to create the culinary experiences on Explorer Journeys. And let me tell you, you are not going to go off this ship hungry at all. We do have six true standalone restaurants, and in all, we have nine culinary experiences. So I'm gonna go through the standalone restaurants quickly here and share with you when they're open, which ones need reservations, so on and so forth. So let's start with Bill Rouge. This is the largest restaurant that we have on board and is our French-inspired international cuisine restaurant. This restaurant seats about 250 people max, and it is open for a sit-down breakfast, and then it is also open for dinner. Some of the things that they have in here that are absolutely delectable are a veal wellington. I personally am a big dessert fan, and they have an amazing souffle in here that the flavors rotate every night. But you can come in here multiple times. Reservation is not required. Again, it is open for sit-down breakfast and for dinner every evening. Right adjacent to Phil Rouge, these are both located on deck four midship, is Med Yacht Club. And connected in between the two is a beautiful table that we like to call the captain's table. It can be reserved for large parties and celebrations. Uh, we would just need to do that through our guest care team. But in, uh, right next to Phil Rouge is, of course, Med Yacht Club featured here. This is where you're going to have a celebration of flavors from the Mediterranean. So think Greek, Italian, Spanish. Even North African tagines are offered in here, all inspired by the Mediterranean. This space probably feels the most like a yacht because of all of the nautical decor that is in the Med Yacht Club. In here, you can enjoy lunch on sea days, and then they are open for dinner every evening as well. No reservations are required in here. You just walk up and you advise them of the size of table that you would like, and you can certainly dine and enjoy Med Yacht Club. Now, I did forget to mention, Phil Rouge is probably the most formal looking of all of our restaurants with the white linen tablecloths, but we do not have any formal nights on board. So every night is country club chic, you can come dressed casually. We just ask no shorts in the dining rooms. Um, suits, ties, jackets are not required in any of our restaurants. Again, that attire is more what we like to call country club chic, which I believe our affluent working wealthy do really appreciate. Next restaurant is what we call Marble and Company. And this is our steakhouse and it's a European steakhouse. So you are gonna find refined cuts of meat from all over the world. And in addition to that, there are other proteins such as fish. I absolutely love the halibut steak that's in here because I am not a beef eater. And then my favorite, favorite dish of all on board is one of the appetizers in here. And it is a bed of creme fraiche covered with uh, garlic smashed potatoes. And on top, you have some lovely caviar with gold flakes. So I hope 
nobody on the line is too terribly hungry, but that is something to definitely look forward to in Marble and Company. Now, Marble and Company is one of the restaurants that you do have to have a reservation. It is only open for dinner, and you can make one reservation online 60 days prior to your sailing. And then if there is additional space on board, you can walk up and make a, a second reservation space available, available um, of course. So that is Marble and Company, our European steakhouse. Next is, I think what I would probably deem my favorite restaurant on board, although they're all very, very good, and that is Sakura. It is our Pan-Asian restaurant. Now, Sakura is open for lunch when we're in port and then dinner every evening. Again, this is another restaurant that you do need to make a reservation in. And I will tell you, the only reason that you need to make a reservation in these restaurants that I'm mentioning is because of the size of the restaurant. It's not because the culinary experience is elevated in this restaurant. It strictly is because of the size. Every single restaurant on board has absolutely amazing food and features different types of culinary experiences. It's just that in Marble and Company and Sakura, it is a smaller space. So you do need to make a reservation in these restaurants. I absolutely love the lobster pad Thai in here, by the way, that, that's one of my favorite. Then we have Emporium Marketplace. And Emporium Marketplace is actually a surprise for everyone, I think. One word that you will not find in our lexicon is buffet. We do not have a buffet on board. Instead, Emporium Marketplace really is all about different cooking stations. There's 18 different cooking stations. It is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it is more of your casual dining experience. And the type of cuisine changes throughout the day, and everything is made a la minute. So you are not gonna be using tongs and picking up things with your hands and looking over plexiglass. You are going to be speaking with the chef or speaking with the attendant there and pointing out what you would like to have fixed for you right then and there. I think people are absolutely loving Emporium Marketplace because the food experience is highly elevated, but you get to dine in a casual environment. For example, we have our freshly made pizzas here with our Italian pizza monger. Bread is made fresh every day. Oh my God, the croissants in there in the morning will blow your mind. And freshly made pastas in the lunch and evening hours lobster every night on the grill if you would like, oysters on the half shell, crab legs, ceviche bar at lunch. There is just an enormous amount of choices in Emporium Marketplace and people are truly, truly loving this experience. The last true standalone restaurant that I'm gonna to touch on is Anthology. And this is our special space on board. And Anthology really is a culinary journey through Italy. It is only open for dinner. There is an experience before Anthology, and this is an eight course tasting menu. It's 140 euro or $140 for the eight course tasting menu. And then if you would like a wine pairing, it's an additional $60 for the wine pairing. Again, a reservation is required in Anthology and it is open only for dinner. And this is truly a journey through Italy that has been curated by Franz Gallinger. He has poured his heart and soul into this and everyone has been raving about the experience in Anthology. Again, reservations can be made up to 60 days prior to the journey departure, and it can be done on the My Explora app with your client's booking information. So those are all of our restaurant experiences, but then in addition to the restaurants, we have all these multiple lounges, and some of them do also offer food as well. In total, we have 12 bars and lounges. We have eight interior bars and lounges, and then we have four exterior bars and lounges. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is just a sampling of some of the bars and lounges. A Stern Lounge is one of the places where we have um, evening dancing, some of our luminaries and lecturers do present in there. It's just a fun atmosphere to come and have a casual drink, chat, maybe even play name that tune or do some trivia. Journey's Lounge is our largest lounge on board, and this is where we have shows every night. But you can see that it's more of a casual cabaret type of a lounge. It isn't a, a theater atmosphere. Uh, you can come in here every evening. We do have a featured show and we have 14 different shows that we feature. So if your clients or guests are on back to back, they aren't gonna be repeating shows. Malt Whiskey Bar, super popular for our guests who love those dark liquors. It's adjacent to our cigar bar that we have a partnership with David Hoff Cigars. 
and we do have an extractor so you don't smell that cigar smoke and you can only smoke cigar in the cigars in the cigar bar. Sky Bar is one of my favorites on deck 14. It's outside, beautiful views from up there, lovely casual atmosphere. Crema Cafe, this is kind of the heartbeat of the ship. It's on deck five midship, and this is where you can get your specialty teas, coffees, light bites, and pastries throughout the day. And they will know your coffee drink within a matter of hours, if not days maximum. Explorer Lounge, this is in the front of the ship. Stunning views in here. It's almost like your own little conservatory uh, with plants growing outside there in the afternoon every day from four to five. We do proper afternoon tea. So you can come up and have tea, have those scones with clotted cream and jam. Uh, also little like pastries and sandwiches as well every day from four to five. Uh, so that's just a sampling of some of the lounging that we have available on board. And across those lounges, we do offer different activities and entertainment for you to find the right vibe for the right time. So activities, we have photography classes. We have, as I mentioned, trivia, name that tune, whatnot. We do DJ sets in the various different lounges. Even out by one of our pools, we do DJ sets um, in the event category we have silent cinemas up in the conservatory pool which i'll show you in a moment we have a partnership with steinway pianos so we have three beautiful spiro steinway pianos on board and those pianos are player pianos but we also have steinway artists come on and we just had francesco perini on board who comes on from time to time and various other steinway artists who will come and entertain us with their piano melodies and then of course we have experiences in the Journeys Lounge, anywhere from Billy Joel songs to Broadway tunes to um, a candlelit evening, lots of different activities. And then we do have luminaries that we bring on at least two luminaries every journey who will give lectures. Some are about the destinations that we're visiting. Some might be about their experiences in life. Some might be about art. Uh, we do have a pop art exhibit right now in our art gallery uh, that is very appealing and very interesting to understand a bit more of. So lots of activities and things to do, but I will tell you there are never announcements made on board. The only announcement is every day at noon from the captain and it's always in English. We don't do announcements in any other language unless it's for safety purposes. So that's something to note and to enjoy when you're on board this luxury experience. Now, I think our ship does shine spectacularly in the warm weather destinations because we do have so many outdoor spaces. Every time I go on board, I find another new little nook and cranny that I didn't know existed that you could tuck away and get lost in and find your own ocean state of mind. We do have four pools on board, which is unheard of for a ship of our size. We have three heated outdoor pools, one on deck five here you're seeing, which is our stern pool one on deck 10 aft, one on deck 11 forward. And then we have in the center of the ship, one indoor pool that has a retractable roof. It's called our conservatory. So that can be enjoyed both in warm and cold weather cruising. Across all these pools, we have 64 cabanas. There is no additional charge for the cabanas. And then we have multiple outdoor and indoor whirlpools. And what I love about a lot of our whirlpools is they're linear whirlpools. I don't know how many times you get into a whirlpool and a hot tub and it's a circular one and you get in and you sit down and there's a couple across from you, you're like those awkward moments. But it, on our ship, if you're in those linear whirlpools, you don't have to have that awkward moment. And they do sit facing out to the ocean. So again, giving you that access to the ocean and keeping you in that ocean state of mind. Now, another sail unique prospect is our ocean wellness program. We did not outsource our spa and fitness center. Everything that we've done with our ocean wellness has been done in-house. And that has been intentional because we wanted to make sure that as we built our programming, we had 100% control over it. And we also wanted it to be focused on true wellness and the well-being of our guests that are sailing with us. So we do focus on the gifts of ocean wellness that you see here, energy, sleep, relaxation, mindfulness, and immunity. So you'll see a lot of our treatments featured focus around these various different wellness factors. This is an example of what your guests would see when they come into the hydrotherapy area, which as I mentioned, is included in their journey fare. 
On port days, you have access to the hydrotherapy area all day long. On sea days, there are designated hours in the morning and designated hours in the afternoon, late afternoon that you have access to it. If you have booked a treatment, you do have access to the hydrotherapy area at all times, whether it be at sea or uh, in port. In the hydrotherapy area, you have the hydrotherapy pool, you have a Himalayan salt cave, which is great for respiratory issues, heated marble loungers, dry sauna, steam room, ice fall shower, experience shower, so on and so forth. It's a very serene, relaxing area. In addition to that, we have 11 treatment rooms, some amazing therapists on board. We have a full service salon as well. And then for those of you who want to try and keep off the pounds that you might be putting on because the culinary is so great. You can have access to our fitness center. We have both an indoor and outdoor fitness center, all powered by Techno Gyms. We have a generous number of cardio pieces of equipment as well as weight equipment. We talked about the classes earlier being included. You can see here, this is one of the classrooms. We do also have Pilates reformers on board. So if you have clients that want to keep up their Pilates regime, they can certainly do that while they're on board. And then we have an outdoor space on deck 14 that has these benches that you see here, as well as bikes and rowing machines so you can work out in the outdoor area. And we have a pickleball court. We have a half basketball court. We do a lot of activities out on those courts, such as yoga to um, to make sure that our guests are getting lots of opportunities to enjoy our ocean wellness programming. Now, something that probably doesn't get talked about a ton when you're referring to an experience on board a ship is the shopping experiences. And again, we curated our shopping experiences 100% in-house because we did want full control over what's being offered in our shop and how they're being presented. And as we sought out purveyors to fill our shops, we were focused on seeking out products that had a focus on discovery, consciousness, provenance, and craftsmanship. So there's a story behind every product that we feature in our shops. And we have over 35 different vendors that we work with. And they are very artisanal brands that you're not gonna find you know, in the airports or on the streets of the big cities. They are very unique and very high quality luxury products. And that's all featured in what we call the journey, which are our shops on board. In addition to the journey, we also have four mono branded shops. Now on Explora One, the four mono branded shops are Cartier, Piaget, Panerai, and Rolex. They are all Swiss watch providers. We are a company that is owned and operated out of Switzerland in Geneva. So we did want to make sure that that gold thread of Swiss luxury is woven through everything that we do, including our shops. And having these model branded shops on board is a special treat, especially Rolex. And believe it or not, people have been booking their journey with us so that they can get a Rolex watch. Because if you are not familiar with Rolex, there is a scarcity and availability of Rolexes. And if you go into a Rolex store, you're typically going to be waiting a year to two years to get your Rolex model. But what we have on board is guaranteed availability to walk off the ship with a Rolex on your wrist. Now, to keep that availability, we do limit the sale of Rolexes to one per person, um, or sorry, one Rolex per suite. We only sell two Rolexes per day. So if you have clients that are interested in Rolex, they would want to come see the shop at the beginning of the journey rather than wait till the very end. Now, there will not be a Rolex shop on Explora 1 and that, or on, sorry, on Explora 2. And that was a conscious decision made by Rolex. We do believe it will be coming back to ship three, but we wanted to offer some variety on Explora 2. And I'm very excited. I'm leaving in three days to go join Explora 2 and be part of our naming ceremony and sail for a portion of our inaugural journey. And one of the new features on Explora 2 will be that we have a Buccellati jewelry shop instead of Rolex. And I'm super excited because we have been getting lots of comments that we should have a jewelry shop and more jewelry on board. So I think partnering with Buccellati, which is an Italian brand, is going to be a big game changer when it comes to what we offer our luxury clients on board by way of our mono branded shops. So speaking of Explora 1 and Explora 2, both ships as well as her subsequent as well as their subsequent sisters 
really do have the sale unique prospect of a positive impact. You know, a lot of times cruising gets a bad rap for environmental and sustainable practices or lack thereof. And we wanna make sure that we are on the forefront of providing environmental supporting features with regard to our ships. So when you look at Explorer 1 and Explorer 2, you're gonna see a lot of these features and more. We use no single use plastics on board. Everyone gets their very own Explorer Journeys water bottle for the entire duration and to take home with them. There are filling stations around the ship. We use LED lighting. We have something called Rena Dolphin certification, which is intentionally done to reduce the noise underwater to preserve our animal, mammals under the water. And we've even positioned the, the propellers in a different place to reduce the vibration and the noise under our ship. High efficiency um, shore to power, it, a ship to shore power is something that we offer and not even every port has that available, but we can literally plug into the power grid of a destination and not have to run off of the engines on the ship. And I saw it done firsthand in LA. So those are just some of the features of our environmental supporting features on Explorer 1 and Explorer 2. But there's even more that will come with our subsequent ships 3, 4, 5, and 6. We do want to leave a positive legacy for the next generations. So as we build our new ships, you will see even more environmentally friendly features. For example, ships three, four, five, and six, they will all be designed identical, but they will actually be 60 feet longer. And that's because those ships are gonna be powered by LNG and what we hope to eventually be powered by hydrogen power. We wanna be looking on the forefront of sustainable power and practices when it comes to the development of our future ships. So right now, Explorer 2, it, well, Explorer 1's been in operation for a year as of August 1st, getting amazing NPS scores. I will tell you our NPS scores have been in the 80s, which is unheard of for a brand new brand. We are outpacing well-known brands like Microsoft and Apple twofold. Uh, Explorer 2 will be introduced this weekend. Her naming ceremony is on Sunday and she will take her first journey on September 16th. And then Explorer 3 will be introduced in the summer of 2026. She will soon be on sale and I'm going to tell you about that in a moment. 2027 is going to be another big year for us because we'll take delivery of ships 4 and 5 and then 2028 we will see delivery of ships 6. Now, if we continue to be successful with the help of all of you as travel advisors on board, we could grow even further beyond this. But this is our prospect for now. This is everything that we've committed to and signed for. And we look forward to sharing with you even more about these ships as they start to come to fruition. So now you're probably wondering, where do we sail? So as I mentioned, we wanted to make sure that we're offering immersive journeys for these clients. And we do have accessible, embark and debark ports, but we're looking for destinations in between that are a little bit more off the beaten path that are going to allow us to travel more like a yacht, a little bit slower, a little bit deeper into the destinations, which allows us to spend more time even overnight in some situations. The overview map that I have right here shows you where Explorer 1 and Explorer 2 are through April of 2026. Now we're intentionally in the Mediterranean and in the Caribbean because we need to get name recognition and brand recognition as a new brand. And that's where the majority of cruisers tend to sail. But the way we sail there, you will see us offering a lot of seven night itineraries. But I don't want you to look at that and go, oh, they're doing something very similar to contemporary ships because we're not. What we're doing is we're doing seven night itineraries that can be combined back to back to back to back to create longer, grander, extended journeys. Remember, we're targeting that affluent working wealthy. They don't always have a lot of time to go on vacation. So seven nights tends to be a great sweet spot for them. We're also targeting new to cruise who don't want to invest a lot of time and money into something that they're not 100% sure they're gonna enjoy. So again, seven night is a sweet spot for them. But, the, but for the guests who want to spend longer, they can combine these journeys back to back without repeating ports of call. Now, a great example of what we're offering in the Caribbean is our festive offerings. 
and we will have two ships in the Caribbean, Explorer 1 and Explorer 2. We still have space. We don't have minimum night requirements like a lot of the hotels do, and the ADR and hotels are through the roof through the holidays. The value that you will find on our festive itineraries that you're seeing here is extremely high. And we just upped the ante on that value a few days ago because we also have additional value savings on many of our back-to-back -back journeys, including our festive dates, as well as third and fourth sale free. So connect with us either on our online booking engine or through our ambassadors to understand what kind of a great value you could offer your clients for festive and new year. We have seven night itineraries where they could do San Miami to San Juan and just encompass Christmas or San Juan to Miami and just encompass New Year's or they could do round trip Miami and get both Christmas and New Year's at an extremely high value. And I know last year's festive journeys were extremely entertaining, super successful. We did lots of special activities for the adults and the kids on board, and it was just a huge success. So if you still have clients looking for festive this year, please throw us in the mix, even if they are hotel clients say, I found something that you might want to consider and compare those price points because I think a lot of them will be shocked to see what we have to offer. Now, next thing I want to touch on, anybody know where this is? Well, if you're a Formula One fan, this is probably a very recognizable destination in that it is Monte Carlo. And if you see at the top center there, that is Explorer 2. And she is going to be the only ship that is docked for the full five days of the Monte Carlo Grand Prix, Monaco Grand Prix in 2025. And we are offering packages for your clients who are Formula One fanatics at an extremely great value. These just opened and we have several different packages for your clients to choose from. All of the packages include grandstand tickets, covered grandstand tickets for those who are booked in Ocean Terrace Suite and Penthouse Suite. And for guests who end up booking in residences, they will come with paddock tickets, which are highly coveted tickets. I did just learn today that as soon as the paddock tickets go on sale, which Formula One dictates all of this, our penthouse guests will have the up or will have the option to upgrade to paddock tickets once those come available. If you have guests that are interested in the Grand Prix, we have not only the five days docked in Monte Carlo, but we also have a pre-journey that they could combine with those five nights, or we have a post-journey that they could buy with those five nights, or they can do a 20 night, which is the pre, the five night, and the and the post all together and have just a fantastic vacation for whole month of May and into June. So check out our Formula One offerings. Again, we are going to be the only ship docked in Monte Carlo. There is limited space available on this. So I would call our ambassadors. If you want a quote, you can hold an option for 72 hours. But they do have to pay in full and it is 100% non-refundable. And that pretty much is in line with all the hotels that you will see uh, offering packages to the Formula One in Monte Carlo. So we will also be opening up deployment very shortly for the rest of 2026 and into 2027. And as that deployment opens, you will see shift number three come online. We will be expanding our global footprint into Northern Europe, Iceland, Greenland, the Canadian Maritimes, down into South America, traveling into the Amazon, into Manaus. And then eventually, if we look future, future, I can tell you in 2027, there are plans for us to be spending the summer in Alaska, and then eventually a ship going into Australia and New Zealand at the end of 2027. So connect with us because these itineraries are going to be opening. The rest of 2026 will be opening sometime in October and into 27 before the end of the year. So you will have opportunities to offer us up to your clients that like to plan much further out. Now I wanna end with our commitment to you because as I mentioned, travel advisors are super, super important to explore journeys. 
and we have made a strong commitment to our travel advisor community. We do offer some very handsome commissions for our partners. We also have no NCFs. Commissions are paid on our add-ons. We have flexible change policies. We also pay commission on all penalties if your guests are within cancellation penalties. To connect with us, please connect to our Travel Advisor Center. It's very easy. You can use this QR code. This gives you access to our booking suite, our marketing suite, our knowledge suite, our by appointment scheduling with our ambassadors. Our booking suite is very, very easy. You can access your bookings, make bookings 24 seven. About 60% of our advisors who are making bookings with us are using that booking suite. And then we've taken it a step further to advertise us. We do have a co, we do have the ability for you to co-brand our website. Again, take a screenshot of this QR code. It is simply three clicks and you get a personalized URL that removes the book now button from our website and creates contact me with all of your contact information and will generate leads to you. So utilize this co-branded website and the experiences that you'll see in here. And one other thing that I wanna point out before we open it up for questions is the fact that we now have an air services program. And there's a couple of things that I love about our air services program. Number one, that you make 5% commission on any air that's booked. Number two, you can book air through our Travel Advisor Center as long as it's within 11 months of journey. If you want quotes and pricing for air outside of 11 months, you do have to call into our air team and they can provide you with quotes and there is a guarantee with regard to pricing there. And I also love the fact that our air program allows you to deviate on either end of the journey up to 40, or sorry, up to 30 days. So you've got that in your back pocket as well. And then last but not least, we do have our Penthouse Dream promotion that's going on right now. It is slated to end on September 16th. Uh, so if you have clients that are interested and want to upgrade, that Penthouse Dream might be a great opportunity for you. Last but not least, I do want to flip out really quickly and show you a quick video because this really does illustrate in 3D what your clients could expect to experience on board Explorer Journey. Jonna, uh, that is it for the presentation. Uh, I'll turn it over if there's any questions that you want to address and make myself available. Amy, I want to first thank you for a wonderful presentation. Um, I'm sure that a lot of the advisors are new to Explora and are just happy to hear that the naming ceremony for Explora 2 is coming out or is happening this weekend. So we hope that you have a great trip there. Um, and just a few questions here, and I want to pass the uh, compliments to you. Uh, a few of our attendees are saying great handouts and thank you for an exceptional presentation. So very, very thankful for you today. Um, but for just a few questions here, one of our attendees is asking about solo rates, because I know that uh -huh. you spoke about um, the different groups that come on and it's not that kids are not allowed on Explora, but it's not really made for them. So could you just speak about solo travelers or affinity group deals or anything like that that Explora offers to clients? 
few bits. I'm glad that that question came up. We do have very attractive solar rates. They start at 125%. And if you connect with us on our Travel Advisor Center, there is a flyer for solos. We don't have specific suites that are designed just for solos. So they would be going into at least our Ocean Terrace suites. And our solo rates range anywhere from 125%. I would say on average, they're around 150, 160-ish, but there are some great deals out there for the solo travelers. And then when it comes to groups, we do have a, what we call Journey Together program, where you can earn a tour conductor credit suite for booking 10 suites and any group space that is held with us, you would be holding that space at a 5% value savings over the lowest available fare. And we do have, again, a flyer on our Journey Together programming, and any of our business relationship leads would be more than happy to speak with you regarding any prospective groups. And speaking of our business relationship leads, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that we do have business relationship leads throughout North America. You can feel free to connect with any of them, and all of our information is found on that travel advisor center both email and phone number thank you for sharing that and just because you brought up the travel advisor portal are there any trainings or um, videos that the travel agents who may be new or who want to just learn more about explorer journeys is there any way that they can access that through the portal or is there somewhere else they can go to get that information you bet. We do have a knowledge suite on our portal, which is our online learning center. There's several modules that will take you even deeper into details about our brand, how it came about, so on and so forth. We also have a YouTube channel with lots of videos on there. If you want to lift any of those and share those with your clients, you can certainly do that. And again, our business relationship leads would be more than happy to conduct a private training with you and your office um, if you would wish to do so. Oh, I love that. It's a very catered service that you guys are offering to our travel agents. So we appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> and just we have um, a second here for one more question. Uh, it seems like a lot of our agents are excited to get on board. And so they're asking <laughs> uh, agent rates or fam trips. I was waiting for that question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we do have travel advisor rates. What we ask is that obviously you engage with us on the travel advisor center, complete the knowledge suite. And if there is a specific sailing that you're looking at or interested in doing, reach out to your business relationship lead and they can provide you with the travel advisor rate on that particular journey. And there is a form that does need to be filled out. We have been offering what we call insider first looks, and those were available for all of our travel advisors who engaged with us early and became what we called pioneers, which meant that they made a booking with us and afforded them the ability to sail with us free. And that was all done before December of 2023. We're still fulfilling some of those opportunities. Um, so there might be some more insider first looks coming up in the future, but I would lean into the travel advisor rates for the moment. And if you are in the Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Southern Florida area, the ships, both of them, will be touching on Miami several times this winter and spring. Connect with your business relationship lead because we will be doing ship tours of both Explorer 1 and 2 during this winter and spring. Amy, thank you so much. And we are just about out of time here. If there were questions that I didn't get to, um, I will be sure to pass those questions along to Amy so that her team at Explorer can reach out to you all individually. Um, Amy, I do want to just mention, um, we appreciate your time this afternoon and sharing all the information with Explorer Journeys. And I'm glad that you mentioned that Explorer 1 and 2 will be in Miami for ship tours because Explorer Journeys um, also offers a virtual ship inspection on our website. So if you can't make it to those, no worries, you'll be able to still explore Explorer One virtually. Um, so Amy, if you just wanna wrap up or leave our agents with just some lasting thoughts about Explorer Journeys, uh, we can wrap up for today. You bet, I wanna thank everyone for joining us today. And as the slide said, the time truly is now. Our pricing will never be at the value that it is today. And that's intentional to try and get both you and your clients to experience what we have to offer. As you can see, we are gonna be around for a long time and we hope that they will come on board, find their ocean state of mind and learn how to sail unique.
Great. And on behalf of Clea and our agents, we want to wish you a very, very successful naming ceremony uh, this weekend and a great and safe travels. And we will see you on the next one. Thanks, everyone.